And I'm going to first put to the floor uh, Dennis Kulu to speak on contribution of religious law in the ADR development, developing a theology of rule of law in the na Rainbow Nation. I uh, want to welcome to you. Thank you very much and good afternoon. My reflection departs uh, from an example of a case that was decided in the Western Cape High Court of Appeal between the Reverend Ecclesia de Langa, I hope I pronounce the word, and the... Okay. The mic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Green. 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 The nose is red. Right. Green. Let's speak a bit louder than me. It's a red one. It should be green. Otherwise it can take more. Maybe you can take mine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So this case was concluded on the 29th of September last year, 2014. So it was indeed a long-winded case uh, whereby the Reverend was suspended by a church. The church's decision to suspend and later to discontinue the appellant as a minister arose as a result of her announcement to her congregation yeah, of her intention to marry her same-sex partner and the later marriage itself. She was charged with contravening the laws and discipline and disciplinary hearing before the church district disciplinary committee, the DTC, ensued at which it was recommended that she be suspended as a minister until such time as the debate within the church on the possibility of same-sex marriage is resolved. On appeal by the appellant to the Connexial Disciplinary Committee, the decision for the DTC was confirmed and the sentence amended to the effect that she be discontinued from the church's ministry. The effect of the appellant's discontinuation was that she remains an ordained minister but is precluded from exercising any ministerial functions, holding any station or receiving any emotions. Finally then the court noted that the clear advantages of arbitration as compared to court processes including expedition, finality and cost effectiveness are compounded when one considers the nature of a particular dispute. The court invoking the doctrine of entanglement in terms of which the courts are reluctant to become entangled in disputes of a religious nature becomes appropriate, particularly where the determination calls for falls within core of religious functions, such as in the instance of this case. Such a dispute, as far as possible, should be left to, to the church to be determined domestically and without interference from a court. A court could only become involved in a dispute of this kind where it is strictly necessary for it to do so. That was the determination uh, of the court uh, in this case. So what happened then? This case was accordingly dismissed. Dismissed whereby also the church was called to go back and to work on its own laws. In arriving at that conclusion, the court emphasized that the appellant had unequivocal disavowed and a claim of unfair discrimination based on sexual orientation and that it therefore could not decide the case on, the, on a basis that she disavowed. And my observation, the court observed that the church did not have any policy on same-sex marriages at the time. And then it applied then the constitution whereby it quickly then went straight to the doctrine of entanglement so that so as to give the, 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 the church an opportunity to develop uh, its own, its own uh, uh, policies on, on this matter. 
from my own perspective or point of view, there's nothing unusual that happened yeah, in this case, yeah, except just to dismiss it. But this is not my focal point. My focal point is the development of the alternative disputes resolutions by churches or by religious communities. When the court dismisses the, the case, say, within, that has taken place within a, the religious setup, I, on my own position, saying this is fair because it is on the grounds of religious freedom. But there is a problem that I foresee, that is the continuation of the violation of some rights of individuals if the court uh, do not engage perhaps more on, on these matters. When these matters are referred back to churches, some churches don't have structures, the alternative dispute resolution a, a, a practices that are in place. So with this then in view, I foresee then that what churches are for the protection of, of human rights, but at the same time, they can also violate these same rights. In order to, 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 to curtail this, I argue that contingent and credible ADR systems is an option for the church to advance the rule of law, that is access to justice. Actually, not so long ago, rule of law was actually thought of as as, as a political or perhaps maybe a legal matter. Yet the TRC of South Africa, 1995, report urged religious communities to develop a design theology that can articulate the characteristics of good citizenship, the rule of law, and the common good in society. This recommendation is not a call for religious communities only to be political attuned as such, is actually a call for religious communities to come up with methods that can enhance the rule of, of law, access to justice, and peace in communities. The ADR will resolve disputes arising from religious relations that perhaps have gone sour, administrative disputes perhaps that happen in the area of finances in some uh, churches or religious communities, disputes perhaps among the members of the church or community or beyond. The question that I'm asking myself is, uh, are they capable, that is, churches and religious communities? Well, I have taken some time to go back to different traditions, of which a few I would like to concentrate on. The Islamic tradition, people centuries ago have been involved in disputes. And according to the Islamic tradition, there is the Sharia, Sharia uh, that has existed for a long time ago and has been helping communities that were in disputes. So then on this basis, I say that yes, there is a possibility of, of disputes being resolved within the churches. If you look back in history, for example, in this case, uh, as I've illustrated, of the Islam, Islamic Sharia law, that there is a possibility, say, of arbitration, negotiation, conciliation, compromise of action, as well as ombuds, a, a person, or the expert determination on the dispute that might be, in, that might be in, 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 at, at least. Looking at the Buddhist tradition, there is also an accommodation as well for the ADR of which it is being handled mainly by the monks or any diligent person who can handle a conflict among the members. Because it is admitted that disputes are a human predicament within this tradition. So people, they need to handle them so that the relationships are always at ease, that there be peace among the community, a, a community members or religious members. So again, I am saying, if these traditions can look back, there is a possibility that the ADRs can be developed. Looking 
the at, at the old Af African tradition religions, certainly they will be working from the negotiations from the African perspective of how to handle the disputes, which in most cases the aim is to reach conciliation and mediation. And of course, the byproduct of this would be the restoration of relationships that perhaps may, might have gone a, 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 a sour. So I am trying to indicate as well that even in the African traditions, there is a possibility of alternative disputes a resolution that can be started up. Coming back then to the Christian tradition. The Christian tradition have got a lot of examples from the biblical text that can be employed in order to develop the ADRs. Not only that, but even the history of the Christian, of the early Christians, if I may to quote uh, maybe a, a few, the collections of the North African bishops like Tertullian, Cyprian, and Augustine are of great importance to this discussion. They were not operating in tribunals, for example, like in Canaan law, where there is a church tribunal that is not actually the, the ADR, but really an administrative or a judicial, a judicial a instrument that is operated by the church and perhaps many other churches. So these early bishops, whilst they were not operating in, this, in, in, in courts in, in a strict sense of the word, they were as such the mediators and arbitrators. For example, Cyprian of Carthage provides information of legal issues that came before him, like an order of bishops dealing with access, with, with cases committed by the clergy, for example, a beautiful case of the Bishop Privatus of, of Labiesis, whereby this bishop was also brought for misconduct uh, to, the, to, 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 to Cyprian who handled this case, his case. Also, when we look uh, at Cyprian, we realize that Cyprian also mediated the cases, not only that regarded the matters of the church, but also matters that were brought to him from the interest of the community, those pe the people who were not necessarily the Catholics or Christians at the time. So what does this say? Looking back at history, I believe that the ADRs have got a possibility that they can be developed. And once they have been developed, I argue that they are capable if the religious communities can come together, for example, to share resources in this way, becoming the mirror of justice in those cases whereby other communities or religious uh, communities cannot manage to have the, the, the conjugate and, and uh, well-structured ADR practices, that they can share these resources. To this, I have also consulted with some uh, ADR practitioners in, in, in the U.S., in the Catholic Church in the U.S., who have praised the efficiency in uh, how this uh, can resolve and bring the, 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 the church community or the church members into unity. So in this regard, I am moving an argument that actually the religious communities do not have to be closed in, into themselves they also can develop the ADRs when they network with others, not necessarily in their own setup, but also beyond. When they relate in this way, then they'll be accommodating more of experience and how can they better work with other ADRs. For example, there are different trainings that are done by, for example, the mediation and, and, and arbitration techniques provided by the independent mediation services of South Africa, uh, the Community Dispute Resolution Trust, of which this also can be taken uh, further, whereby the, the relationships can also be linked uh, with the African Center for Construction Resolution of Disputes. 
There are many examples that one can quote uh, whereby religious communities, when they network and, com and communicate with others, can form a very strong ADR so that once these uh, ADRs are in place, people can, pro can bring in uh, uh, their disputes and conflicts. The motivation must be the protection of public order, not necessarily because of revenge, <coughs> but simply because of common good, that is, the love of the neighbor, as it is being encouraged in various religious communities, which ultimately this is aiming at a, a peace and justice uh, within these communities or at the, at, at, at the society at, at large. What would be the benefits then of these alternative disputes uh, when they are from the religious communities? Obviously, appealing, it, will, it will be appealing to the religious uh, members to have their disputes resolved within the ADR practice that is in the church. Because they can relate uh, their spiritual perhaps uh, difficulties and how they can live better as the church. The second one would be the congregations at times are very adamant to challenge the anointed of God, uh, the, the priest, or pastors when they have perhaps uh, 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 acted illegitimately. So when, we, when, when these uh, uh, ADRs are in place, they will offer an opportunity whereby the members of the church can really be in a position to know what is it that had happened that has created a dispute. Even though perhaps they might not act so harshly but at least the truth is known. Once the truth is known, arguable, there will be a, 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 a lesser chances that it is being recurred because once somebody has been unveiled that actually you have committed this and the whole community knows, then there will be that opportunity for one then to change that is the metanoia. Religious communities living I mean, religious communities live with the people at grassroots. So the ADR promises better understanding in a sense that the ADR uh, practitioners will speak the language of the people, of the people at grassroots. So in this way, I foresee this as a greater benefit that will make these ADRs even more resourceful uh, to the local communities. And lastly, these ADRs can be a very good uh, source for the promotion of the rule of law and the enhancement of human rights uh, from the communities and once they are from the communities can also spread to the surrounding uh, communities of society. I thank you. I thank you.